The camera is like way. Good angry. morning. Um, it's kind of crazy here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything is uh, gonna work okay here with the sound, and it's we're in a brighter room. <laughs> a lot's going on today. Um, we uh, have shifted things over to the new studio, which is still a work in progress. But I have my desktop computer finally, um, which is what we're on. So today is a bit of a celebration. So I'm very happy. Um, I have more space to work and uh, I am actually able to work after three months of not being able to in the fashion that I'm I'm used to. So um, definite stress reliever and uh, very thrilled with uh, the people at NZXT who built her for me. And uh, good morning, Jack. Hey. So this is just kind of a figure out where the camera angle is. Which is out, way over there, yeah, apparently. Figure, <laughs> figure out what's going I'm on. I'm looking all this way, so. <laughs> kind of shifted a little bit. That side of the room we won't talk about. We're... <laughs> Uh, that's someone else's problem at this point. <laughs> no, but uh, no, no, we're I'm still kidding. shifting things and uh, setting up equipment and doing that kind of thing. So, and I still keep wanting to look over here because I'm, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> well, to be fair, the chat is over there. So. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have my other monitor working yet. I've got to do. Um, I've got to find my original HDMI cable for it. Uh, some of the stuff on the back didn't coordinate with what I had. So use my old desk. This is my old desk. This is my old desk. <laughs> we just moved it. Yeah, that is that is. Yeah, the this desk. is the desk. That is the desk. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I will let you go for it with your Manga. Actually, first, <laughs> uh, first one I have here is not manga. Um, a Norton Critical Edition of Beowulf. Uh, I have I have had the Haney edition of this, the one that's got like the bilingual translation uh, and everything. This is just the uh, uh, just a Norton Critical Edition of this. Um, it is very well done, though. It has um, some very good notes in it and everything. Um, but I wanted to make an interesting uh, note about this, because someone brought this up on one of the D&D videos that I was watching the other day. And because if you look at Eaters of the Dead, Michael Crichton's book, uh, and the following movie. It works a lot in the fashion that a D&D campaign would if one person in the group did not want to play Vikings. He said, no, I'm just going to be this guy from a far off land who's a poet and a diplomat and ends up hornswoggled and left for dead in this place and gets picked up by these strange Vikings who he has to learn the language barrier for and blah, blah, blah. So it feels like one person in the group is this guy that just didn't want to be Vikings like everybody else and comes along for the ride, but then ends up being like the spotlight and is the guy that's like, well, I'm in the center of attention because I'm different, right? So Someone brought that up the other day, and I was just like, yep, holy player. cow. Yeah, and it's just like, it, it really feels like this was like one of those D&D campaigns that, you know, Michael Crichton had either when he was a kid <laughs> or when he was an older, that he kind of went, oh, yeah, I'm going I'm gonna to immortalize this in fiction, right? And he just <laughs> wrote it all into a book, cool. you know? And that, that would totally feel like Michael, you know? Between, think, between you, know? <laughs> you and Issa... And me and Logan, too, uh -huh. we've got enough for several novels. And I, I really think, <laughs> like, you and I 
on stalemate, on Odinasha, on Remnant, on, you know, we've done the kind of the LARP mm -hmm. conversation where we're in character or you're trying to help me, you know, work out a certain piece of dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, section of dialogue or, yeah. you know, I totally utilize and see the usefulness of being able to LARP or being able to, mm -hmm. you know, game in that sense and set, stepping inside your characters and being able to mm -hmm. know your characters well enough to know how they would re react to certain situations. And, you know, so playing D&D, &D, playing tabletop and writing the story down that way, mm -hmm. totally plausible, huge you know, writing tool. I think a lot, a lot more writers would benefit too from it. The other one, as as Ria mentions, is Ghost Mondo. in the Shell. Is manga and is the original film from 1996. So I have both editions. One of, still in plastic. Of these, <laughs> one is still in shrink plastic because I've read the larger version of this when it came out in English that they discontinued, I believe. If you can find it on eBay, it's a much larger book. It's more like the size of a larger a trade paperback. This is, um, you know, like a full-size graphic novel, like what you would see DC print or something. Uh, when they came out in this smaller format through, I believe it was, I'm trying to remember, was that Tokyo Pop or is that Dark Horse? I think Dark that's Horse. Dark Horse. Dark Horse Comics put these out years ago, back in, I think, 2002 somewhere in that neighborhood. So I snagged both of them because I got an employee discount mm -hmm. at the bookstore. So I grabbed both of them as they Gotta came out that. on the shelf. And I think I paid $7 for each of them or something like that. I think they were originally 12 or something like that, maybe 15. And so I, this one is the second season. This is the one based on I believe this is the one based on the TV series that follows Standalone Complex, if I recall. Did we see that? I know we've seen Standalone Complex. We've I have it, but I don't know if you've ever watched it. If you have it, I've watched it. You have? Because I've never watched it with you, so I don't know if you've watched it or not. I've never watched it. I thought we'd watched everything I've, that you have. I don't remember if we have. I guess we have something we need to watch then, or... Mm -hmm. We Something. yeah, and I know it I've can seen be the movie, and I know I've seen the. It can be the uh, watched series. in. I can wa be watched subbed or dubbed either way, yeah. um, or it can just be watched in English with. You know, the questionable translation. You know, <laughs> the translations um, are. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you can watch it in the original Japanese, and it'll mm -hmm. have the the translation underneath, but I can't verify how accurate accurate yeah. that is compared to when fans go in on like YouTube and translate something, yeah, you know, based on, you know, their study and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I picked both of these up. I actually have standalone complex as well. It's in the other room on, on DVD and everything, but I wanted to include with it a copy of the original ghost in the shell, um, which was the film that came out in, uh, 1996 and if I had to recommend something else by this same author this same creator uh, uh Shirao Masamuni it's um is Appleseed Appleseed is fantastic also and I believe there's a tv series for that also yeah so there you the, go um one of the things too with Ghost in the Shell they did come out with a uh newer movie and used Scarlett Johansson and there was a huge uproar on the fact that they had whitewashed the character. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the movie. Mm -hmm. I am not into Ghost in the Shell like you are. Yeah. Um, mainly because it wasn't one of the first anime that I got into. When the There was three anime that kind of formed my opinion on the anime originally was the Ranma One Half series. Oh, yeah, it was one of the first things I watched. And I was yep. dating a guy, uh, Wally, mm -hmm. who has an enormous man manga uh, collection and had 
everything on VHS too for it for stuff. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Slowly converted over to D DVD. Um, I don't know if he's ever finished with that conversion. There's so many. Ghost in the show. Good morning. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. What would you like to be called? But welcome in. Yep. Yeah, the movie was good, but it was butchered from the actual story. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Morning. So the, like I said, the movie was good and I tend to go in. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a feeling, but I was like, I, can, I, I could not read the kanji, yes. so I'm not sure. But good to see you. Um. But yeah, Ghost in the Shell, the, the three that that formed my opinion on it, anime, though, was Ronma One Half. He made sure I watched that first. Uh, Record of Lotus Wars, which was kind of, you know, you had Deed Lit, and it was kind of yeah. D and D, but anime. You know what you know what Lotus fun. is, right? Hmm. It's roads. 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 All the roads to war, basically. But it was really it was really no, like good. Rhodes, I the liked island. it. Oh, okay. The Greek island, Rhodes. Um, and El Hazard, which I haven't seen in forever, but it was so funny. And um, so those three were my first. Since then, of course, Studio Ghibli, and um, the oh, what was the other uh, Fruits Basket. Yes. The original Fruits Basket. The original. I haven't seen the new one yet. Yeah. Um, and then Val branched me out into Ghost in the Shell, uh, Witch Hunter Robin. Witch Hunter Robin. Um, uh, I, I do have the manga the, for, I do have the manga in there for Vampire Princess Mew, uh, the TV Helsing. series for that. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch Van Helsing until well, I think Helsing. you did. Until Helsing. You, and Helsing until yeah. you did. Um, I do have Vampire Princess Mew in there, which I have the five. We've watched a couple of different ones. The, the five graphic novels that you can get for that available in um, the United States, the ones published through Iron Cat or Iron Cat Studios, I do have in the bedroom in there. Um, but they, the publishing company folded or was folded and then revived, and they put out another issue or two and then it folded again or something because i never saw anything past issue number five or six in english but everything in japanese is available but you have to be able to read japanese to understand it you could buy it it'll be in japanese but it's there yeah yeah but in english i can't find anything past like episode five like number five so, so mm -hmm. his birthday's coming up on monday so hint hint everybody starts searching <laughs> <laughs> we're actually uh going to have a bit of fun this weekend um we're going to visit herophany and hedge which is uh has become one of my favorite stores uh we're gonna have lunch at hofbau house which is a really good mm -hmm. german restaurant near cincinnati uh probably hit half price books apparently there's four half price books up in, in, Cincinnati, in Cincinnati area. Mm -hmm. Um and what else? Oh, the uh, uh ancient I don't know. caves. You guys are driving. <laughs> the ancient caves uh oh, okay. IMAX. That's no. kind of more for me, but I've been wanting to see it and I'm afraid that it's gonna leave the theater before I get to see it. Um I actually oh. have a extensive cave system in my novel Odanasha and I really, really am like obsessed with I want to see cave stuff. Um, I actually want to go to um, you okay? eyelash my head no. or something <laughs> to Mammoth Cave. Um, they have a yeah. handicap accessible route. I found out, so I definitely want to go on that. I mm. definitely want to go to the Mega Cavern in Louisville, which is big enough for them to have a zip line. I am not getting my butt on a zip line. Uh -uh. No, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I will not be doing that. <laughs> but. Um, they have places where you can go in and tour. Uh, ironically, I found, uh, well, not ironically, we were in a peddler mall here in Kentucky. So I would kind of expect if I was going to find it anywhere, it would be here. 
Um, but I have my original Viewmaster from when I was a kid, you know, the little red plastic, you know, put the, the mm -hmm. little reel in and you slip through. And I used to love that thing. I found the set for Mammoth Cave and I was so excited. So I have that. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always wanted to, to see that. Uh, Issa and her dad went and they were telling me horror stories about some of the there's a there's one tunnel called fat man's misery and you have to like you know hold your breath in hold everything in and pray you get through and I I'm not claustrophobic but that just sounded very very claustrophobic um <laughs> hey aggressively good morning why not <laughs> yeah you come with me and you go do that no 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 <laughs> Um, double dog there, Jack, you come visit and you go zip lining. Actually, there's a couple places here to go zip lining, but, um, <laughs> cause I'm taking photos. Um, you're a Marine, so I know you do it, but yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> I am not doing it though. Whether a person will do it is probably not the question. It's yeah. It's should you. <laughs> yeah. But, um, that landing at the end it's like can um, i hold on long enough while it <laughs> now i've done zip lining i've done um <laughs> repelling i've done the yeah i'm i'm good <laughs> mm -hmm. i've done my time too heavy for the requirement yeah i know that's my problem so uh -huh. it's just nobody wants to see that for me <laughs> nobody's nobody wants to see that um but uh, there's that, there's Mega Cavern. There's two cave rides where you can actually go in a boat ride in the cave. Inside They're huge. Yeah. I want to say Mega Cavern mm -hmm. in Louisville has one. And I there's another so. one in Tennessee. But I'm just like, I really want to go. I really want to go. I want to take a boat ride in the cave. You know, it's just going to add more description to my uh, to my novel. So, and I'm starting to work on that. Again, right after Stalemate, I have already shifted mm. Stalemate to Scrivener on my desktop computer and mm. um, am going to be doing revisions. I've already revised the first intro prologue. Mm -hmm. I did that yesterday. Speaking of. So. All, all three of my novels, unless you have them, are on the other computer. I'm going to and pull the hard drive. The hard drive is necessary for all three of them. <laughs> Otherwise, yes. it's that so. you had it in drive. You don't. I think uh, I have copies of all of them, but yeah, we're pulling the hard drive anyway. They, I, I might have them I on Dropbox. I don't think I do. I still have to they pull were, the other they hard were drive saved on through. They were saved through Scrivener, and I. Yeah, I feel you, drive. They're, they're for Same sure. Here. They're on that other hard drive though. And yeah. Yeah, I just, I finally have this set up, so now I can start going through and pulling, but, and Drac uh, gave me the lovely tool to use to pull stuff off hard drives, so, mm -hmm. which I still have, and as soon as I get those other, <laughs> the other two older computers, his and now mine, <laughs> pulled, we'll figure it out, but um, I have a book and a deck. So this is a, a book that I had picked up a little while ago um, that was just one of those things that I wanted around as inspiration and to um, be able to see different perspectives and different things on um, color influence and painting on vellum anatomical accuracy, cropped composition, capturing movement. So this has got a lot of really beautiful illustrations in it that my camera is going to try and autofocus, even though I told it not to. Um, but this has a lot of really <laughs> pretty <laughs> illustrations and talks about different perspectives. Um, sticks. Sticks. It's relative scale. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And so this is a really good reference tool. Um, I love this piece right here. It's textured collage. And 
that's like right up my alley for the stuff I like doing. So it's uh, been really useful for me anytime I feel stuck. And I just kind of, it's kind of like holding Pinterest in your hand, <laughs> being able to uh, look at different techniques. There's a lot of different artists that are in here. Um, so it's really, really cool. So Just Draw Botanicals by Helen Birch is mm -hmm. a, like I said, it's a compilation of a bunch of different artists and their um, viewpoints. There's 90 different contemporary artists um, with advice on each one and techniques, tools, tips, advice covers, composition, color, painting techniques, and tips for working with plants. So it's just a really, really cool book. And then the other thing is, I don't think I've done a review of this before. I'm not sure. This was something I backed on Kickstarter, I think. I'm not sure. They sent me a, a big box of them, so I'm pretty sure it was Kickstarter. And I've given away probably half of them. It was right before COVID. And then it was just like, okay, I guess I'm just going to put a post to know who I want to gift it to and leave it at that. But these are reflection cards. I've used these on my Twitch live stream before. Um, they are, uh, there's a hundred plus cards, thought provoking questions centered around mindful themes like intention, resilience, adventure, and compassion. And you can use them for journaling. You can use them for, you know, prompts to talk about in a, you know, live chat. Um, so these are, are pretty cool. We'll go ahead and pull a random card here. And they have a uh, mini version of their manifesto, which I'll link to their video. That was where I saw it first. Um, it says, this is your life. Do what you love and do it often. If you don't like something, change it. If you don't like your job, quit. If you don't have enough time, stop watching TV. If you're looking for the love of your life, stop. They'll be waiting for you when you start doing things you love. Stop over, stop over analyzing. All emotions are beautiful. When you eat, appreciate every last bite. Life is simple. Open your mind, arms, and heart to new things and people. We are united in our differences. Ask the next person you see what their passion is and share your inspiring dream with them. Travel often. Getting lost will help you find yourself. Some opportunities only come once. Seize them. Life is about the people you meet and the things you create with them. So go out and start creating. Life is short. Live your dream and share your passion. So I eventually want to get a poster of this for my wall because they have that. But um, people at Holstie have always been really, really uh, cool anytime I've talked to them. Here you go. What's your superpower? What is your superpower? Jack, aggressively, Morikawa, what is your, what do you consider your superpower? Not what superpower would you have, but what is the superpower that you have now? Hmm. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. I think your ability to learn languages is huge. He's, he's like mental level with languages and has a real mm -hmm. gift for him. When we Compared were going to others, probably not, but well, yeah. we were going to, it's not, it's not on the level of the guy that's on YouTube that has like, that's a polyglot that does like 38 languages, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. you were learning four languages at the same time when we were going to go to Europe. But because that's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> and it was cool because he could see the comparison of the languages, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think your superpower is your willingness to help and your compassion. Your perseverance and your resilience, Drac, would be for you. Aggressively, I don't know you well enough yet. Your ability to relax. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, because Marikawa, we know from uh, Guild Wars 2 and was instrumental 
and us getting anywhere in that game for the longest time because we were noobs. It would have taken us forever to find stuff. And Morikawa basically took us by the hand and, you know, ran with us and showed us how to do stuff and eventually joined, uh, joined my guild. And just, we've, it's been such a pleasure to, um, you know, have them as kind of extended family now mm -hmm. and uh, be able to uh, hang out and run around with them. So, which I am looking forward to doing again. We need to figure out when you're going to be on. Um, Cause now that I can game and just, oh my gosh, it, I got to get my second monitor working though, because for live stream, it's a bit of a pain. <laughs> um, but uh I don't know. What would you say my superpower is? Don't put me on the spot for that. And the knowledge of nothing. No one needs to know things on. <laughs> National Sarcasm Society, we don't need your support. Mm -hmm. Like we need your like support. Like we need your like support. Like we need your support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Jack, there's there you have lots of superpowers. You have lots of superpowers. So what would y'all consider mine? Cross between maybe multitasking. I know I would like it to be kindness, but not going to help me out here, are you? No. <laughs> no pressure. I'm smart. No I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the, does this make me look fat? Never answer that question never ever and ever. never answer it slowly never answer the question never <laughs> answer it slowly pretend like you didn't hear them and change the subject <laughs> spontaneous i guess yeah spontaneous is definitely um pivoting actually i'm gonna say that that's probably my superpower is being able to pivot happy wife happy life <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades, yeah. Um, even even more so, I would probably say I strive to to live like water to be able to pivot and where necessary and be able to, you know, if I hit a wall, then I figure out a way over, under, or around it, or through it, or you know, there's there's always a choice, and I only know forward. Um, you know, might not be a choice you want to make, might not be a good choice, but, um, adaptability, I guess, is probably the word because I've had to, to adapt to a, a lot of things, health issues, moving, change, completely revamped our life when we moved to Kentucky, um, you know, any kind of emergencies. Thankfully, I don't panic, but I can pivot and go, okay, assess the situation quickly, you know, and move forward kind of thing. So I think adaptability would be my, hmm. if I had to say one for myself is be able to, and that's the spontaneous kind of falls into that. So, so hmm. pivoting, pivoting like water. <laughs> um, trying to think we, with everything going on, I've got tons of books in the other room, but I want to talk more about like music and a bunch of other stuff. Wonder Twins activate. I'm a bucket of water. <laughs> Wonder Twin powers activate. <laughs> oh my gosh. I haven't seen that in forever. Mm -hmm. The... We've got our, this is our 30th episode. So I was thinking of doing 33 episodes and then evaluating where we were at. Um, I do going forward. I want to talk more about other stuff, not just mm -hmm. books. Cause I know we have a lot of books, but I think we're eventually going to 
run out. Ha 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 ha. As Already, we plan, I'm getting there. As we plan to to. Well, most of the rest of your books are gaming books, so. Yeah. I still think you need to start reviewing like indie modules for for 5e because lord knows there's tons of them um so it's like if you have a D, &D if you have a D, D module that you would like to get reviewed i think my you know just drop us a note and uh we'll give you the the mailing address <laughs> Have it drop ship though, because we're not going to be taking personal packages. That's just a can of worms. Um, so I will talk about this one too. Is Slow Quest is somebody I follow on Patreon. Oh, that's interesting. His name is Bodhi, or their name is Bodhi. And this was a character creation deck that I backed on Kickstarter a while ago that is select one or two of each of the main card types either randomly or by choosing use the prompts on your selected cards to inspire ideas for interesting new character try to think beyond your initial assumptions of what each card means there's no right or wrong interpretation so there's five different colors you can choose from and it has all these different prompts um i've gotten a few things uh from them and i love their artwork like that's an orc beast folk i love their artwork devilkin hmm. the goblins are probably one of the first things that i'd ever seen of their artwork um and then there's like merchant performer ranger so you get the archetypes and then trapped betrayed mysterious that thing and then sensitive fearless unknowing <laughs> rabbit passionate so there's different traits and then container Tool, document, book, gadget. Got a steampunk clockwork turtle there. Cute. Nice. Um, and then there's uh, different last names and first names. And so you can roll dice to uh, pick different things on here. It's really cool what they put together. Um, they are constantly coming out with stuff. And if you want different modules and different stories and maps and other stuff mm -hmm. follow them on patreon they're really cool um that might actually be something i do is review uh review some of the patreon people that i follow um and maybe some other uh other creatives because mm -hmm. i'm very much a lift as you climb and i like being able to mm -hmm. to support other ones yeah. one of my favorite uh i realized recently that um I used to buy stuff, buttons and art prints and stuff from, uh, we were moving stuff around and I had a couple of prints still in the envelope that they sent them in and realized that they're in the Ukraine in Lviv. Oh yeah. So it's, yeah, the one over in our room there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, huge prayers still going out for the Ukraine in that situation. Um, there is a link or will be a link to devs for Ukraine. I still am doing that. I need to cut some more paper and fold some more devs. Mm -hmm. I have a art installation at, um, Berea arts council that is, uh, going to be, um, there for a little while, but it's a dove folding station. I need to actually take, I've got a couple of bags of devs I need to take in and hang so people can see how many we've got. Um, but I still want to get to the point where we can, um, uh, send them to not sure exactly where, um, but send them possibly over with one of the two charities mm -hmm. to get to the refugees. So, uh, that is coming along just slowly. Uh, we've lost a little bit of momentum with it, but we're good. 
Uh, Drax says, when I used to go to shows, there were vendors that mm-hmm. sold card decks for different types of things related to role playing. Most were DMs, <laughs> but all had great content. Yeah, I've seen mm-hmm. some really cool ones. Um, I have several. Um, one of the things that I learned a long time ago, too, is using tarot decks to generate characters. So that's actually mm-hmm. um, that's actually something since I collect tarot decks. Um, that has been kind of fun. And I have a couple of smaller decks that would be interesting, but my, um, my husband here is the one that's the, the constant character builder. (laughs) That's like his relax time activity is I'm just going to roll up 20 characters randomly. They're usually for, for they're they're usually for my, campaign world but yeah yeah, that's yeah yeah so um and i actually have instructed people for writing for novels and stuff hey geo how are you good morning (laughs) or actually afternoon for you i think so it's like morikawa what time is it for you Six hours earlier, something like seven that. hours, yeah. six or seven hours earlier. Maybe. But I, what I started to say was, um, hell yeah, I have to go get the mini people in a bit though. <laughs> it's nearly 3 p.m. How are you feeling, by the way? Nine p.m. <laughs> At least it's not like 4 a.m. or something. It's not too bad. So you're 12 hours. I forgot about that. Okay. Like 11 and a half hours. Okay. Yeah. But I hope you're feeling good. <laughs> yeah. But... I hope you're feeling better, <clears throat> Gio. Talking for nearly four hours is proven sore on the job, but otherwise a lot better. Good. Yeah, I I yeah get fatigued now from streaming a lot easier. So I'm having to, and a lot of it's getting used to being on the the desk again too. Um, so it's even if it's not off, I still have cameras facing me. I still have two monitors. I have the iPad. You know, I have the camera and just it takes up cognitive load. And it's even if it's not turned on, not facing me and I have the thing closed on it, it's still you feel like you're in front of the camera. Um, And I wish there was a way that I could like just pop the cameras off and put them away somewhere when I'm not on stream. Yeah, it's a lot of input on your brain, definitely. Like I said, mm-hmm. I'd like to be able to just, you know, if I could shift everything easily, I can't. Um, the one camera will pop out, but then I have to readjust everything. And same thing if I move any of the other stuff. So I've kind of got a little a couple of brain tricks to ignore it, you know, when it's there. But most of my work i'm still doing uh a lot of my drawing on the ipad i am going to be doing some stuff on the um the tablet which i actually don't even have connected yet so Hmm. and i've used up all the usb (laughs) cardboard frame around the screen so you can remove it for streaming heights um with the fact that like you can see the top of my other camera right here hello um so i have the two monitors and then, which this one's not working. This is the one we're staring at constantly. And then the cameras are right in between. Um, with a big ring light on top. With, up yeah, here, so. with a big ring light. It's kind of like I'm a big using, droid. It just kind of sits up here. Not using like right now. Flight of the Navigator with that little guy in the, in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, so I can imagine somebody's trying effects. to sit here and there's this thing sitting here like, it's kind of like the 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 Pixar lamp constantly. <laughs> okay, that was funny. So this is 
this is the setup. Ah! Oh. Which is way too bright. Yes. Well, the screen is like blinding white. Yeah. Really, so. Okay. So that's my setup. So I have the cameras right there in the middle. I have the two monitors. And then the stuff on the desk. So that's what I'm that's what I'm dealing with. So not really a way I can put a box around it per se. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. They're bright and I love the sound effect. <laughs> I know. This is my life. This is my life. This man will do anything and everything he can to absolutely crack me up. I was taking a photo of the setup on the computer the other day and he photo bombed me. So there's a picture in discord of him looking at me between the screens. Mm -hmm. I have, I have two kids. One just moved out. <laughs> I would not change him for the world. So, but, uh, birthday boy over here. Um, but yeah, just, uh, it's, it's a Jedi mind trick, you know, trying to figure it out. But a lot of times I just, I play on the out of sight, mm -hmm. out of mind thing that is ADD and I just ignore it. And I focus down on my desk on my drawing and that kind of thing. And I actually have room where I can, when my, I've got my chair pulled back right now, but when my chair's up where it needs to be, I've got room over here on the side because there's all my pens. Most of them, I'm still pulling pens. I still have pens everywhere. So I have by color with a bunch of different um, styles in here. So there's the longer ones don't sit well, but so I've got the Japanese midliners in two colors the Faber Cassell, the Schwann, um, the Koi watercolor, and the free color spot. So I have them by color. I had a friend of mine that was doing that when they set up their studio years ago, and it was a huge help to them, um, you know, doing collage and doing other stuff um, to be able to have them set up like by color. Um, even though they're different mediums and that kind of thing. So, and then I have, <laughs> you can tell which, which microns I use the most. This is the 03, this is the 005. Um, and so at some point I'm going to get, uh, probably start doing some reviews of art supplies and different things. Um, I would like to do that. So. And of course we got mm -hmm. the Christmas lights, the white lights around. <laughs> she left them here. So I just left them up. Um, we have some in our bedroom too. They're only on about but, maybe three weeks a year. Or so yeah, usually when it's cold weather, about two weeks we'll before Christmas on. and then maybe a week after January into January. So just the start of January. So yeah. Yeah. Ambiance. Mm -hmm. But so we're going to let you go. We've been on for about 45 minutes. Um, we are going to reevaluate. If y'all want to see more of this, if y'all want to um, us to shift to art supplies and D&D &D, or, or just pretty much whatever y'all want us to talk about. Uh, if you have questions, we're more than you know willing to, to play with it. Um, we are going to evaluate on our 33rd episode whether or not we want to continue. I do, but we don't have a whole lot of views. Um, Y'all are like, this is the most people that we've had in here. Um, we put Christmas lights in our bedroom years ago and they never come down. Yep, exactly. Yep. People talk while I, playing games or doing things, but for some reason only get tired fatigue while streaming. That's why I said condition your mind to streaming. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I knew someone years ago who had red chili pepper lights around his bedroom window years ago. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a bunch of different kinds of lights. And, um, eventually when we get a house, that's one of the things I want to do is like a backyard area, have like a pergola with lights everywhere. So it's just a nice place to go and relax and, 
you know, have a, a bonfire in the backyard kind of thing. Have a great day today. You too. I don't really swing by on Thursday. Could stream making art. I could actually do that on uh, on YouTube. I do that for um, I do that for Twitch already, but I know it's a different crowd here. Um, and my art streams or art videos actually usually do okay. Um, if you have not watched it, I have a coffee and journaling. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. It's coffee, might be coffee and journal. Um, but I have a whole series of videos and that's actually, um, the first few I was figuring out the music. Some don't have sound. There's a lot of them though. Uh, later on there's music on them and I created the music. Um, I think it's coffee and journal. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, Coffee and Journal. There are 33 videos, 29 videos. No, 24 videos. Yeah. Uh, about 30, about 30 ish minutes. Yeah, 15 20, to 35. Yeah, roughly about half an hour, 15 yeah. minutes to half an hour long. So they're not very long. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of them though ha that have music that I actually uh, created because I didn't like any of the YouTube canned stuff that they had at the time. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to see me journal, if you want to you know watch time lapses and stuff, I have 24 videos up that y'all can check out. So, um, but for this week, I'm gonna call it. We're still drinking the the Post Alley Seattle's best. We need to get some new coffee. We're going to go to uh, mm. Jungle Gyms and peruse their aisle. And uh, I have two coffees bookmarked. I just can't acquire. I can't grab them right now. So the, Well, yeah. birthday. So I'll yeah. take a look at the birthday list. Um, I know Drax already asked me for it. I need to send it. Okay. But, uh, but yeah. So love y'all. Thank you so much for being here, for hanging out. Definitely. Yeah. Go, go check out the, the other videos. I've even got a couple of goofy ones that were Issa and I doing some stuff. Um, okay. No problem. You have a great rest Hi, of your Gio. day, Gio. Give the, <laughs> give the little, the little Geos, the little bits hugs for me and tell them I said, hello. Need to do like a, a zoom with y'all and do like an art day or something. Um, just us and you know I can teach him drawing or something but uh Marikawa take a look at uh discord I'll drop you a note and we'll figure out when we can all get together in game and uh finally got uh Destiny 2 put on my computer too yeah. so we've been playing that too yeah we did that last, uh, last night, night and bit. everything I removed several a couple of things that yeah, it took takes up, up almost a, took up a little bit of space, computer. but I have like 23 gig free on my hard drive that's only 250. So, because it takes whatever it is, Man, 80, 86 need gig. Need to see if we've got an expansion <laughs> slot for that too. But uh, but, but it's there. All, so have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, mm -hmm. your weekend, and uh, love y'all. We'll see you next stream. I am doing uh, streaming at noon. Saturday because we're yep. we're doing our stuff on Sunday, um, mm -hmm. but uh, twelve noon Eastern Standard Time. I'm gonna be streaming something hands on like maybe book binding or something um, this weekend. Maybe some painting. I gotta dig for my watercolor kit. I still have no idea where all my watercolors went and I put them in one bin and now they're gone. So um, we'll do that and then of course. We'll continue doing this mm -hmm. as long as y'all want us here. So, bye. <laughs>